However, after looking at these benchmarks, I'm actually going to change my mind. So I recently released a video on the best workstation for most CG VFX artists in 2020. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to include a link to that video in this video. Since then, I got a lot of requests for benchmarks. Uh, and so this is what this video is going to be about. We are going to check out a bunch of benchmarks that are relevant to the CG VFX artist. Hi, I'm Nelson Lim. I'm a VFX artist and technologist. I also blog and create video content like this to help other computer graphics practitioners to create more, to earn more, and to live more on this channel, as well as my website, nelsonlim.com. If you're really excited about content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, as well as click on the bell to get notified when new videos drop every Tuesday. Remember to hit the like button, and let's jump right in. All right, performance benchmarks. First off, I'm going to break up the benchmarks into render benchmarks and simulation benchmarks. So first, let's talk about render benchmarks. With render benchmarks, we begin off with the Cinebench CPU scores. Cinebench is a Cinema 4D benchmark. It's a great example of performance on a DCC app like Cinema 4D. That's a very popular DCC app that's used by a lot of CG artists. Uh, and these benchmark uh, the CPU renders. These CPUs were chosen largely because of price. This is performance. Uh, the 3950X because naturally that is our workstation. The 3900X because that's our budget pick. The 2950X Threadripper is chosen because it's the last gen 16 core uh, Threadripper. We'll just want to see what the performance is if you're trying to pick up a old Threadripper. And the 24 core, let's just see how does that compare. The Intel, obviously, because this is the so-called, you know, the competitor chip to the 3950X and the Threadripper 3970X, because this is the chip that if you had a bunch more money and you were willing to pay for performance, the, you know, this is probably the best um, value for money, a high performance chip that you should get. So we want to see how this stacks up in terms of performance with our Ryzen 3950X. What is multi-core performance? Multi-core performance just means that in rendering, it uses all of the cores. So how does this perform when it uses all of the cores that are available? These benchmarks are sorted by price from the most expensive to the cheapest. And we just want to first take a look at how it compares with its predecessor, the 2950X, which is actually a Threadripper. It looks like in terms of multi-core CPU scores, it actually scores 2000 points better. And even if you were to find a 2950, I believe the Ryzen 3950X is still cheaper. So definitely go with the third generation Ryzen 3950X if you were to decide that you want, you know, a 16 core. Even if you were to compare it actually to the 3900X, which is our budget pick, and it, the, our budget pick 3900X actually does better than the last generation 2950X Threadripper at half the price. So this is, I think, a testament to how well the CPU core performance has improved in the third generation AMD chips, as well as the architecture in general has improved significantly. If we compare this with the 24 core, which has eight cores more, uh, the performances are very similar at 9,178 versus 9,624. The performances are very similar, but obviously the threat repo is going to cost more. Um, now, if we compare this with the i9, right now it seems to outperform the i9 by 300 points with two cores less, and it's about $280 cheaper. So, if you are considering the Intel i9 versus the 3950X, I would probably go with the AMD 3950X. Again, the 3900X is a really good option, definitely something that you should consider and any CG artist should be able to do awesome work with a 3900X. Single core performance just measures how each core performs by itself and I thought it would be interesting to include them in the results. Uh, we can see that again with the third generation AMD chips, 
The single core performances have largely improved. Uh, surprisingly, it has even done better than the Intel i9 10980XE in terms of single core performance. Definitely a very interesting find, but in general, you know, these are the results. Blender. So Blender is another very popular open source DCC application that does not need any introduction. In this case, I use the Blender Benchmarks uh, classroom scene to benchmark these renders. And the Blender Benchmark is derived from data from users across the world that's available at the Blender Open Data website. And again, all these, are, all these CPUs are sorted by price. And it looks like in this situation that the Intel 10980XE seems to do better. However, I also wanted to point out that there were less than 20 sample points uh, for the result for the Intel uh, compared to usually typically over 100 sample results for all of these other CPUs. Once again, the 3950X does perform very well at 265 uh, seconds of render time. Uh, and you compare that with all of the other, uh, the Threadripper, the second generation Threadrippers, as well as even the 3970X that is at 144 seconds. Uh, the 3950X does score very well for the CPU classroom render scene in Blender. Let's take a look at the Blender GPU classroom results. You know, with GPUs and rendering in Blender, it seems that the RTX 2070 Super really hits a very good sweet spot here, where it's 169 seconds uh, for the CUDA render times and 100 seconds for the optics render times. And those are very, very similar render times if you compare them to the 2080 Super that is about $200 more. Again, we see, you know, the very same similar uh, results, maybe about, in this case, uh, 20 seconds less uh, and um, 20 seconds less for the 2080 Ti. So this is something that if you use Blender GPU a lot, uh, definitely consider the 2070 Super. Moving on, I wanted to talk a little bit about Octane benchmarks because Octane is also used a lot by CG artists out there for GPU rendering. And the Octane benchmark scores are weighted against the GTX 980, which has a base score of 100. So you could say that the RTX 2070 is 2.2 times better than the GTX 980. Uh, again, RTX 2070 hits a really sweet spot on these Octane benchmarks in terms of price versus performance uh, at 222 points especially in comparison to the 2080 Super that's uh, $200 more and scores about 10 points more. The next significant leap is to basically move to the RTX 2080 Ti and it does perform, you know, close to maybe about 30% better with 302 as its score. But it also comes at twice uh, the price, actually more than twice the price so you ask yourself at this point, you know, is it just better to then just get 20, two 2070 Supers? Finally, if you need, actually need more memory to render your scenes, the larger memories of the, 11, uh, of the 11 gigs in the 2080 Ti and the 24 gigs in the Titan RTX is what you're also paying the extra money for. So to be fair, there is still a case for the 2080 Ti's and the Titans because you know, if you need that large amount of memories, you will have to go for these cards. Next, the Redshift Benchmark Render Times. The Redshift Benchmark Render Times show very similar um, results, in my opinion. Very similar findings to the Octane Benchmarks. The 2070 Super, once again, showing it's at a really good spot here. It is better to spend, in my opinion, the extra money on another 2070 Super or even a 2060 than to purchase a TI. Nonetheless, this is all based on the assumptions that your scenes stay within the 8 gig memory limit of these cards and you don't need to um, have data move in and out of video memory because that will obviously slow down your renders if data has to keep moving in and out. So to make sure that your scene actually fits within the memory limit. So to be fair, 
there is a case for the 2080 Ti's and Titan still. And that is if you do find that you are, you, you know, you decided that you are going to do a lot more GPU rendering because you've already tried it, then you already know whether your scenes are largely gonna fit within eight gigabytes or not. Do you need more memory or not? So I would say this is definitely a, a, a good scenario. If you're just getting into GPU rendering, to just get the 2070 Super. And if you discover that you want to do more with GPU rendering, you have the option of getting a 2080 Ti or, or just getting another 2080 Super. So that's personally my advice. Uh, for folks who are excited to get into GPU rendering, have not tried it, want to get their toes wet, you know, pretty much like me, um, to just go for a 2070 Super and you will know pretty soon what your next card is going to be because if you're doing GPU rendering, you're going to probably need more than one GPU card. So next, let's jump into simulation benchmarks. With simulation benchmarks, uh, I have done all of the simulation benchmarks in Houdini. I have used the Iro grain and flip fluid scenes from VFX Arabia uh, because they made it available for benchmarks. And there is some amount of you know benchmark data sets on their website uh, for a bunch of different CPUs. The sample points are are not that many or I can't really find if it's one sample point or if it's multiple sample points. So I would take these benchmarks with a bit of a pinch of salt because I think that there are far less data points and it's hard to verify the number of samples too. Also, I wanted to point out that I was unable to find uh, the, 2090, the 2950X uh, Windows performance and I was only able to get the Linux performance so obviously, um, it is a known fact that Linux does perform better than Windows uh, in terms of simulation and in fact, even rendering. I also did not find data on the 2970WX. And all of these simulations are run without OpenCL acceleration in the same times. And finally, uh, a point to note, you have to turn off core performance boosting as it makes Houdini unstable. So for this simulation results, all of the, the AMD Ryzen 3950X was run with core performance boosting turned off. So it basically caps it at 3.5 gigahertz and it doesn't boost to higher clock speeds when under heavier workloads. Very interesting to basically maybe in the future run a uh, overclocking comparison of how 3950X would perform if we overclock it beyond 3.5 gigahertz because we know it can perform above 3.5 gigahertz. So let's jump into the Houdini grain simulation times. The Houdini grain simulation times, uh, we ran it at 0.01 particle separation, uh, simulating about 700,000 pa grain particles. And taking a look at it, um, the workstation matches the 3950X benchmarks from VFX Arabia. At 320 seconds, that is pretty good. Now, if you're willing to pay another $1,100 more and a more expensive motherboard for the 3970X, you will likely shave 100 seconds off of your simulation times. A very capable uh, 3900X is at 362 seconds it makes it a very compelling um, recommendation and choice being 40% cheaper and it's only 40 seconds slower. You know, this is definitely something that is, a, you know, uh, it's surprising to me. Moving on with pyro, our pyro sims are run at 0 0.02 particle separation, uh, almost amounting to 10 million voxels in our grids. Uh, and the pyro sims seem to benefit the most from multi-core performance. Our 3950X benchmark uh, looks like it performs marginally worse than VFX Arabia's results at 817 seconds versus 851 seconds. It's hard again to tell why that's the case or whether the systems have been optimized in some way, um, but this is the results that we find. Again, the TR2950X performing better at 738 seconds, I largely chalk it up uh, to it being run on a Linux system. And so you have the Linux operating system boost. Very close performance to the um, 18 core uh, Intel 10980XE, it seems if we compare basically just the 
um, benchmark results from VFX Arabia. If you do a lot of pyrocyms, it seems that the more cores, the, the better. And once again, I'd like to point out that the 3900X is still a pretty competent uh, performer here at about 20%, um, you know, slower in terms of simulation times. And, but still, I mean, this is 40% cheaper. This is $413, uh, very, very telling value for most CG VFX artists. Finally, our flip fluid simulation times. We, I ran wave tank simulation at about 0.05 particle separation, which is about 36 million particles in the tank. And just looking at this result, seems that our workstation's results are marginally better than uh, VFX Arabia's results. Now, it's hard to say, but it seems that the flip sims do benefit from those extra cores. Uh, but I'm finding it hard to draw too many conclusions from these samples that seem a little bit unexpected um, in terms of the 3900X actually performing uh, very similar to the 3950X and how the uh, Intel 10980XE actually performs so much better uh, and in fact, you know, pretty close at, you know, 300 seconds away from just the 3970X that has, you know, 32 cores. So I'm not gonna draw too many conclusions on that, but it would be good to be able to do our performance, our own performance benchmarking in the future, maybe starting off with the 3900X. If that's something that you like, remember to just write in the comments, tell me what you wanna see, uh, tell me what kind of videos you want me to make. So in conclusion, the 3950X is definitely a very sweet spot in terms of price versus performance for the CG VFX artist, whether we're talking about rendering tasks or simulation tasks. However, after looking at these benchmarks, I'm actually going to change my mind and start recommending the 3900X for most CG VFX artists. In fact, even if you're a student or a beginner getting into effects, I would certainly recommend the 3900X. It would be more than sufficient for most of your effects simulation needs. The 3900X benchmark has really surprised me, especially for its price point. At $413, it is a full almost $300 cheaper than the 3950X. And so it makes it a very, very compelling buy for most CGVFX artists. Now with that said, I still recommend the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super for most CGVFX artists. If you find yourself down the road getting into GPU rendering, uh, saving that extra cash and getting another 2070 Super is going to be the best bang for your buck, especially with you know, the uh, new 3080 series looming uh, in terms of its release. However, you know, if you are seeing this video sometime in the future after the NVIDIA 30 series cards have been released and you spot a 2080 or a 2080 Super at about the same price as a 2070 Super, then it makes sense to go ahead and grab those instead. Um, but they are only just marginally better uh, for an extra $200 at the moment. So that's not something that I would recommend. Am I missing out on something or do you think this benchmark comparison video has helped you? Definitely write in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Until next time, remember to hit that subscribe button and smash that bell and I'll see you next week.